Excuse me, I, I'd like to buy a check. I have a customer, miss. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Now, <clears throat> that's T-R-A-V-I-S-A-N-T-I. Uh, T-E. E is an I. <clears throat> e. Uh, look, all I need is a blank check. Do you mind? You girls. Now you want women's liberation and ladies first, huh? Uh, it's terribly important that I cash a check and get some money to my friend right away. So why don't you go to a regular teller? They sell checks. The lines are out the door and halfway down the block, and I'm in an emergency situation. Uh -huh. uh, please, um, my name is Dr. Coleridge. My family's done business with you for years. Could you spare me one minute of your time? It's not up to me, miss. <sighs> She's a doctor. She outranks me. Go ahead, oh, sweetheart. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. What's your account number? Oh, for heaven's sakes, I have no idea. It's printed on my personal checks and I don't have them with me. You see, that's the problem. You don't know your account number? No! Can't you look it up or something? I'll have to look it up. Thank you. What's the name? Coleridge. Faith Coleridge. With a C? Yes. Look, is there some faster way? Is the manager around or something? Oh, now, he only does big business. But maybe if you talk real pretty to him... Three, three, nine, four, two, yes. zero, five, seven. Your account number is three, three, nine, four, two... Zero five seven. If you'd like to make a note of it. No, thank you. I don't have the time. Please hurry. Is this Claremont address current? Yes, of course it is. I'm sorry, but the longer you delay, uh, the more danger my friend is in. Thank you so much. That'll be 25 cents. 25 cents. I'm not sure if I have it. Oh, God. Well, well, well. Thomas O'Brien, of all people. <laughs> Don't blame <him. laughs> Still the romantic, huh, Thomas? Well, let me see now. How long has it been? Four years, nearly. My God, it doesn't seem possible. Wasn't it just the other day my sister and my brother died? Or maybe it only feels that way to me, huh? Look, we should talk. We, we never have. Well, come inside. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, Thomas, here and now. And I intend to enjoy it to the very utmost. Eight hundred. so too. I think you could say that officially I am settled in. I love this apartment just as soon as the real estate man opened the door. But now that I've seen it furnished, I, I mean, it's a dream. Every room. Well, you saw to it that all the furniture got here and Thelma took over from there. Doesn't everyone think it's wonderful? Actually, you and Mr. Ryan are the only people who've seen it since all the pictures were hung. Which is a fact I'm about to remedy. <laughs> well, what did Mr. Ryan say? About the apartment, not too much. About other things, quite a bit. Mr. Ryan and I had a little difference of opinion. Just the sort of thing that keeps life interesting. Mm. Well, you said the, that you had a project for me. Ray? Yeah. Have you talked to your friend, Dr. Carter? 
Well, yes, I called him right before I came over here. How's Dr. Bullock doing? He's on the critical list. What does that mean exactly? Or didn't Dr. T Carter tell you? We really didn't talk very long. And if he did tell you something that was confidential, I wouldn't have wanted you to repeat it. Actually, very much hope Dr. Bolak does get better. For his own sake, obviously, but... To be completely honest with you, I'm also thinking about Miss Coleridge, her baby, Frank, his future. He did seem to be improving this morning. He was conscious more often. But Bucky sounded very discouraged. It's my feeling that it's just a matter of time. Miss Coleridge with him? Yes, constantly. Mm. Wish there was something I could do. However, since there obviously isn't, let's get on to your project. Doing. Well, his pulse is a little slow. It's not too bad. Yes. It's my pulse. Listen, you're doing fine, Doctor. Just relax. I wish you would. Is that Yeah. I'm right here. You shouldn't be. Better. You let me worry about that, okay? Can't help it. Really. I'm okay. That's good news. Do you want me to call your mother and tell her that you're okay? No. No. Not yet. She doesn't know. No. You told me this morning that you didn't want me to upset her. Uh -huh. I just thought maybe you changed your mind. Tomorrow. Well, I can tell her myself. How's the pain? Trick is not to think about it. Talk to me. I'm afraid that I'll wear you out. The worst is over now. Believe me. Oh. How's that one? <laughs> well, I only saw him a second when I went home to change my clothes. But I called Miriam a little while ago, and she says that he is terrific. Uh -huh. I have some new photographs of him that you haven't seen. Uh -huh. I'll show them to you later. Uh, come on. As long as I'm awake, huh? Okay. Just a sec. Oh. Oh. Nurse? Oh. Please, phone for Dr. Moultrie, please. Dr. Moultrie, please. How did you find me? By keeping at it. That's my way, you know. I thought for sure if I left home in Ireland and the name of Brian, you'd never catch up with me. What was it tipped you off? Well, 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 now he's trying to stall. <laughs> a gun in his belly and he's having a chat. Well, Tom, this will make a great story. So there we are, boys, on a rooftop in New York City, and it's cold and deserted. And O'Brien isn't smiling like he used to in the ring. <laughs> he's not even silent like he was at his trial. Oh, no. He's running on off, off at the mouth, blabbing at me because this is as scared as the lad's ever been. Go ahead, Thomas. Talk away. Then get down on your knees and beg. Go on, I'd love that. I didn't murder your brother. Oh, no, no. The whole thing was a terrible accident. 
James is dead and Teresa is dead. And you were sitting home by the fire through it all. Huh? Well, this is very amusing, Tom. Tell me who it was beat James to death. One of the Kelly boys? Am I shooting the wrong man? Look, Jim came at me. Don't move one muscle. That's right. Jabber on now. You know he jumped me from behind. With the chain, I have scars that... That prove came it. in very handy with the judge. Yes, I remember them very well. Those little scratches that let you plead self-defense. Why didn't you hang? It would have saved me so much time and expense. I was tried and acquitted. According to the law and my own conscience, I'm innocent. You're as guilty as sin. And I suggest you admit it now before you go. Come on, Tom. Confess. Then you can make a good act of contrition. Then I'll put four or five bullets in you and your soul will fly up to heaven in the form of a perfect white dove. <laughs> You're frightened as a girl, aren't you? Did you think I'd go bravely? No, I did not. Well, at least do it quickly. Oh, but I'm hoping you'll uh, break down and humiliate yourself in some pathetic way that I'll remember forever after. Playing me for a fool. Huh? You think I don't see you looking for a way to grab this gun? All right, one question, then. How fast the tears dried. My mother. Is she all right? You never heard. <laughs> the face on him. <laughs> no. Aside from watching our mail, I've left the lady in peace. We see each other now and then at the graveyard. My father goes there every Sunday with, with flowers for Teresa's grave. The man you claim never gave a damn about his daughter, I believe those were your words. I'm sure he loved her. Did you know that half of him went with her? She's never been right since we buried her. So she claim, climbs out her own bedroom window and falls and breaks her pretty neck and he has to live with it. There's plenty in town said he kept her prisoner. A girl that got everything she ever asked for and then some. His favorite. And all he ever asked for in return was a little obedience and respect. Which she gave him till you got your hands on her. I loved Terry. You're never going to say that again. I mean, this is a rooftop. It's a public place. People come up here all the time. If a shot goes off, there are four apartments, one flight down. Two flights. I meant the next building over. Don't worry. Nobody's going to catch me or surprise me. In all the hours I've stood there, not a living soul has come through that door, except for the one I was expecting. From here on in, everything's simple. I suppose that's what you thought when you shot Dr. Bullock. Was, as a matter of fact. The man had no business walking around in your tracks and in your coat. I'm sorry I mistook him for you, but in the dark, well, it just couldn't be helped. I hope the poor fellow pulls through or dies fast, whichever's the most merciful. If he dies, there'll be a real hunt for you. Dr. Bolok is a very important scientist. Oh, yes, so I was reading. I wonder if they've heard of him in Wales. Mm -hmm. I'll be living there for the next year, Tom. You wouldn't know the town, so small it's not even on the map. A year won't do it, Liam, especially if you shoot me too. You'll, you'll have to hide out the rest of your life. Well, in that case, you must give me all the tricks of the trade, huh? Oh, I know the first one. Get yourself a lady friend. Oh, no, you don't dare have any friends. Acquaintances, then, companions. Whatever it is you call people like your sweet little blonde. Oh, oh, oh she is lovely, Tommy. <laughs> and once you're gone, she'll have no one to take care of her. You think she might enjoy the south of Wales, huh? Have you talked to her? Of course. I had to warn her what happens to girls that hook up with you. The poor dears end up falling from high places and bleeding on the sidewalks. Fighting to get one word out. Tom, she said, and that was all. I didn't ask Terry to come to me that night. There was no plan. There was, and you're going to admit it once and for all before I pull this trigger. He's fainted, but he's coming around. What happened? Well, he was conscious. He was lucid. But then he moved. 
stupid. Sorry. He, he wanted to see some new pictures of Edmund. I, I went to get them. I turned around, and, and he had sat up, and then he fainted. Oh, Seneca, did you do that? First, you not to try that again. You were sudden, very sharp pain when you when you when you when came college. No, 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 just sick, kind of dizzy. That's very sick. Ah, oh, lying flat. Huh? That's fine. He did seem better. Yeah, his reflexes are normal. Well, the next time you're feeling independent, think spinal cord. The bullet came too close, Seneca. Hey. Okay. So what's this fainting all about? Pressure drop. Uh -huh. yeah. move. Or with those static hypotension. Oh, it's possible there's something pressing against the spine, and the question is, what? Hmm? Well, let's just hope it's a clot. Oh, yeah. Uh, a bullet fragment, a, uh, a bone chip. Would you listen to him? I mean, next thing he's going to do is wheeling himself into surgery. Show me the films. Do you believe this, man? This doctor, you are the patient here. So let's just all try to keep that in mind, all right? Nurse, Morris, Morris, you're going to need a tomogram. And as soon as we get it, you're going to see it, okay? Yeah. yeah. Would somebody please explain to me what's going on? Well, we think that Seneca fainted because his blood pressure dropped when he tried to move into the sitting position. And what could have caused that was uh, some kind of constriction on the spinal cord. A blood clot pressing against it? Yeah, maybe. And if it's that, then it could be absorbed by the blood naturally. I mean, if the bleeding stopped. But on the other hand, it could be that it's a fragment, an actual fragment of bullet, bone, or something like that, and then it'd have to be removed surgically. Well, how can you tell if the bleeding stopped? Well, you just watch for the symptoms. Increased paralysis. And that could happen in surgery, too. What is a tomogram? Tomogram's a special kind of x-ray. Gives us a close, very sharp focus so we can locate any bit of foreign matter. Bucky, is paralysis really a possibility? Yeah. Hey, Bucky. Bucky. Excuse us, Julian. Hello, Will. Uh, you're tired. Go home. Sleep. I'm not going anywhere. No place. We are going to give a dinner party. We are? Mm-hmm. We're going to christen my new dining room and raise some campaign money for Frank. Oh, a big party. No, not really. About 16. Oh, 16 isn't that big. Give the menu to Renee. He makes it all happen. Audrey and Thelma take care of the apartment. You and I concentrate on being beautiful. I could never get used to it. There was a time when I used to say that. Well, now, let's see. In honor of the occasion, I think we should be formal. Black tie. Uh, long gowns for the women. Of course. So I can wear black and look smashing. <laughs> hey, get something for yourself, too, huh? I think I will. Okay, 16. Uh, you will give me the list, the invitation list, and I will send out the notes? No, you're not going to have time for that. You'll have to call. The party's tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> it's not tomorrow. You're just joking. No, I'm deadly serious. Uh... But when am I going to get to shop for my dress? Tomorrow morning, maybe? <laughs> get something a little bit daring. People like to give money more when the atmosphere is very pleasant. Besides, it's fun to dress up. Guest list, uh, Frank Ryan. Uh, you don't have to call him. I'll do that myself. You got a message through to her when she went to church. One of your sisters, probably. Tom will be waiting for you tomorrow night, Terry, by the window of his cell in the moonlight. He's got more of his filthy poems for you. Or was it to go a bit further? Maybe you, you bribed the guard to let her in, huh? There was no messages. It was the night before the verdict came in. I wouldn't have dared make trouble. By God, you dared often enough before. How many times did my father forbid you to see her? Oh, Liam, look, you're... you're... A soft voice. Yes, you were in love. A drunken fool, howling the name of Teresa Donahue all over Limerick. And her spitting in the face of the man we picked for her. 
You ruined her with your love. You ruined my whole family. I meant no harm to any of them. Liar! We'd have been rich now if my father had gone into partnership with the Tullys. And you were the one, only one that, that prevented that. You're going to deny that? I won't deny I wanted Terry to marry me. You ordered her to stop seeing young Tully. And to insult him till my brother and I couldn't drag him back to the house. I never ordered her to do anything. I tried to tell that to Jim, but when he came at me with a chain, damn it, I had to fight back. I wish to God I'd been with yes, him. Yes, I'm sure you do. Because we'd have butchered you and buried you without a trace. And Tully and Donna, who don't have a violin by now. Can I ask how you'd have forced your sister into that marriage? My father would have reasoned with her. As it was, he locked her up for days, and that didn't work. Shut your mouth. She couldn't even go for a walk. I was told you didn't like that. You wanted some freedom for her. Were you afraid what she might do if she got desperate? Teresa did not commit suicide! Down on both knees! in for a night of drama featuring the biggest stars from your favorite TV shows and movies. It's your night for a great film with the Sunday Night Movies, every Sunday night at 10 on SoapNet.